We're ready? Yeah. We're ready? Are we yeah. on? Yep. Hey guys, Pitmaster here. I'm here with the doc. John, good to see you. And we are going to talk about all things UFC Al Iquinta. Is that how you said it right? Yeah, Aya Quinta. Aya Quinta and Kevin Lee, the Motown uh, phenom. Um, good fight. Good card. Um, not the best one ever, but it was definitely good. Um, it was kind of the end of an era, right? With the They kept saying that on there. It was the last Fox, UFC on Fox. Oh, shit. Yeah. Which, if it's on Fox Sports, it's one thing. It's cable. But UFC on Fox is cool because it's just on regular broadcast TV. Um, so that's it. That was. The, they've I been think with it's them. confusing as shit, though. Some are, some aren't. Some I got to go to channel like eight, and some I have to go to like one fifty one. It's it's so hard to dis. You, they don't let you know ahead of time, so you're like flipping back and forth until you find it. But anyway, I found it. So they're not on Fox anymore. That no. was it for the on Fox UFC. They have a new deal with ESPN. ESPN. No. Oh, okay. So will it make a difference for the fans? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, we thought it would with Fox, and then uh, it, it was actually an upgrade. Um, they did a great job. I, don't, I wonder why they changed. It must have been some kind of inner workings, but it seemed really good. It seemed like a good fit. I wonder why they changed it. I mean, I could see why they're going to change Reebok, um, because so many fighters don't get the uh, sponsorship money that, that they want. But who? I wonder why this didn't. I, I wonder who it didn't benefit and why they didn't agree to carry it on. It's money. It's got to be money. Got it. Well, I just like the fact that it was on Fox. Not all of them were. Most of them, the fight nights were not on actual Fox. This was like the number thirty-one on the Fox. So they were on network. Yeah, the other ones were on Fox. Sports. I don't know who doesn't have Sports cable. Sports one, but yeah. if you don't have cable. And you don't have access to anything else, and you're just watching TV. It was on regular TV, so they probably. I think it would have been good for the UFC. They've been doing it for a long time. They've been with Fox, so it'll be a change. We'll see what happens. I wonder what. I wonder when that when that Reebok deal's over. That's gonna be interesting. Um, I like it, and I don't like it, um, but that'd be interesting too. Um, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go from fight number one, the main event, the the main event of the main card. Kevin Lee lost a unanimous decision. By the looks of him, he didn't think he lost. Um, I actually did a survey, just like, who do you think won? And 88% thought Al won. Um, I thought it was close, and I thought it could have gone either way somewhat. But it, but it didn't. And, and, and I wouldn't have argued this decision... If I was in in Lee's corner, no, no way. Uh, and and you have to remember, round five was very possibly and should have been a two point round because I mean he got the should be I mean he got pounded from from side to side of the cage. Well, this brings up a question I had watching this fight, and if you're watching a judge score the fight, not the ref, but the judge that's scoring the fight. Do they score round by round so they can't go back and change? You know, for me, it was like uh, Al took on this fight definitely in the fourth and fifth round. He was winning, and it's weird to end a fight when you won two rounds and then lose by decision. That didn't happen, but do the do the judges score all when just all at once when they're done, or do they score as they go, or do you That's know? Right. Yeah, I do know, and they score as they go. But you, end, In fact, at the end of each round, they give their card in. So the only way you can change it if you think the tide's turning and you think Al should win, even if Kevin won those first three rounds, See, which I'm not saying he did, is no, you could give him a two-point round <laughs> in yeah, the last round. He did. Yeah. I thought it was a two-point round. I mean, that that wasn't... Because that was nothing like rounds one, two, or three. Those were one-point rounds. Yeah. Four, eh, probably a one-point round. Number Round five was nothing like those other rounds. That was a two-point round for Al, but, I mean, without a doubt. So, with that, I mean, was that, that could have been a draw? Maybe. I don't think there's any way you could have given Lee the fight. Could have given it a draw. Um, but it was Al's fight, and it was a unanimous decision. Like I said, I did a survey. Everything I saw, everybody I saw that, except for 
Lee, um, I think, won, thought that uh, Al won. Well, and I think he should have won because in a real fight, this fight's going to go till it's over. Who's going to win this? If this is a fight like the old school UFC till the end, till someone wins, who wins this fight every time? This is Al's fight. This fight was going downhill for Kevin Lee in the last yeah. round. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they can't square it that way. No, but that's the way it should go if you're trying to see who the better fighter is. The better fighter is the guy who is dominating at the end and who, if it went any longer, would have won. Yeah, but the you, yeah, but you're not judging on who's the better that's, fighter. That's how I'm judging it. You're judging on who's <laughs> who's who won that 25 minutes. So who won the majority of the 25 minutes? I thought, and I thought it was Al. I mean, especially with the with the with the dominance, he got taken down. He got control for a little while, but then he got back up, and then he. he I think he controlled the stand up for just about the whole fight. Um, Lee Lee had crisper punches. But they weren't as hard, and they weren't as often. So I thought it was a good decision, um, and it was a good fight. I mean, I think um, Lee came into this fight pretty confident. If you watched him walk out, I don't know what he walked out to, but he walked out. He's dancing. They're trying to check him. You know, they check their face. Yeah. And he's dan- he's like moving all over the place, and the guy's trying to get him to stop moving so he can check his gloves. And I thought that was pretty funny. The guy's like, <laughs> like, stop dancing. I need to check you so you can get in the get in the ring. So yeah. He, yeah, he seemed confident. He they seemed did that. fight before. He was pretty confident that he gained a lot of skills since they fought. They fought a long time ago, yeah. these two. Yeah, but Al Iaquinta, Al Iaquinta won the first fight also by decision. And he won this fight by decision. So that's two. Uh, you know, who knows? They may fight again someday. But I thought, I thought like, but a fighter probably shouldn't fight again if they've already beat the guy twice. No. Yeah. I, I wish some somebody, I'm not going to mention names, took that advice. Yeah, so I, I think you, they probably won't fight again. No. Um, but who is who is higher in, who is some, higher in the rankings going into this fight? I think it was uh, Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee was number four, and uh, Al was number eight. So those rankings are going to get shifted up a little bit. Yeah, and, and it was weird that that I thought Kevin Lee kept it standing because it looked like he had such an easy take. He had an easy time taking him down. Uh, and then it seemed like the other attempts, he he got he failed a couple of attempts, but they were pretty hard, half-hearted. It seemed like when he just stepped in, he was able to take him down at will, uh, but he stopped doing that. And then he just got on his bicycle. Um, I don't know if he if he got exhausted or what, but then Al was able to actually cut off the cage. He didn't just follow him around. He actually stalked him and cut off the cage, and he was able to land, mainly with that right hand, but he, he, he did... Uh, That's got to make you feel claustrophobic when your fighter's stalking you but also cut, not giving you a way out. Al was good about that. He kept on him and didn't cut off the cage every time when he tried to move over. And there's over. nowhere to go once, once you're up against the cage. So it was a good fight. I thought Al won, um, but it was, a, you know, it was a close fight, but I, I didn't think it was... Who's in Al's corner? Uh is Matt Sarah? Matt Sarah. Dude, you don't need and a mic. You don't need a mic up or their corner. You don't need a mic up their corner. You oh could hear God. their instructions and hear Matt Sarah uh, screaming. And Ray Longo. Ray yeah. Longo. These guys Punch are Punch a hole screaming. in his chest. Punch <laughs> a hole in his chest. So I, I actually enjoyed that. I wish we could hear the corner more. Um, but in this fight, if you got Matt Sarah in your corner, you can hear the corner from on the TV just fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so yeah. I, I like that. I liked how you could hear their instructions and hear what they were telling them to do. Matt Sarah's, uh, yeah, they're characters, man. They're the New York boys. So that was a good fight. Uh, it's weird that um, Al Iaquanta is a he's a real estate agent by trade. So that's his that's his profession. He's a real he's a realtor. So he, interesting guy, interesting fight. Okay, and he did fight Khabib late uh, notice, right? One day notice and went one. Did day. they go the full? Five rounds? Yeah, I think they did. I think they went the full five rounds. That's a tough guy. He's a, he's he's tough as shit. He's yeah, and he's good, like the raging bull. Uh, this next fight was absolutely terrible to watch. Um, it made me sick to my stomach. Um, but there was a lot to learn. I'll tell you what you learned. I'll, let me <laughs> so just this was just tell them who it was. It was uh, Barbosa Bar- and Dan Hooker. Yeah, so this was the co-main. This was okay. This is what you learn. If you're in the corner, I'm not gonna name any names. I'm not gonna even name any fights. <clears throat> Hooker, Barbosa. Um, 
If you're in the corner and your fighter's getting the living shit kicked out of them, I mean, like, getting fucking brutalized, and the referee doesn't stop it. Stop it. It's, it's your fucking job to stop it. What are you waiting for? What were you waiting for? Were you waiting for him to lacerate his liver? He's going to get cirrhosis from that fight. He's yellow right now with jaundice. That, that was, that was, I didn't even blame the referee as much as I blame the corner. The corner should have stopped the fight. I'm telling you right now, if you're in a corner, and this from now on, any, any of you guys looking at this, you're in a corner, ever. If you're a corner man, and you have a fighter in that cage or ring, and they are getting the shit beat out of them, throw in the fucking towel. There's no reason not to. It doesn't make you braver. To have them get the shit kicked out of them more. That doesn't make you tougher. It doesn't. It makes you a terrible corner man. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, there's definitely... That's just the way it seems it's mostly done. And the UFC as a corner, other than you, doesn't throw in the towel. Okay, I'm telling you. If you're so, in the corner and you're in the UFC, throw in the fucking towel, so guys. you had the announcer... Or not the announcers, but DC was commentating on the fight... He, he was wanted saying, to stop it. He was saying, guys, we can stop this fight. I don't know what he meant by that, but he kept saying it over and over. He's like, guys, he like, guys we can stop this he fight. Wanted to. He wanted to stop Like, it. I don't know what he wanted his co-announcers to do. He would have been do. in deep shit. He would have been in deep shit. But he wa- <laughs> anyone he wa- with a heart wanted to stop that fight. DC should have stopped the fight. He shouldn't just sit there and say, guys, we should stop no, this he fight. Have. He shouldn't have. He, uh, he could have gotten in deep trouble from that. Seriously. He's, that's not his place. Um, and I see the, the, the passion of it. He's a double champ. I think he could do it. (laughs) He could do it. I think he could get away with it. Him or if John McCarthy was in the crowd could run in there and stop the fight. Yeah. I think it's, it's, well, whatever. It should have been stopped. This guy, this guy took, first of all, um, they said he's in the hospital for an overnight stay for a concussion, but man. It's his liver. It's he, his liver. He took some body shots. He's and that's jealous. what ended the fight, right? Or body shots. He was doubled over. He's, he is cirrhosis. You right don't now. usually see a fight end with the fighter doubled over, his not knocked liver. out, doubled over on his knees, not able to move. His liver. It's like it's like he's been he's like it's like he drinks two <laughs> bottles of whiskey every night for the last eighty night, eighty years. I can't imagine getting kicked by Edson Barboza anywhere. No, that, that's the hardest <laughs> kicker pound for pound in the UFC. He stopped people with leg kicks, liver kicks, and head kicks. He's the hardest kicker in the UFC, and he kicked this guy like 28 fucking times in the liver. What do you So th- talking about his kicks, what do you think about Dan Hooker fighting as a southpaw against Barboza? Barboza beat up his lead leg, beat up um, Hooker's lead leg as a southpaw. So he beat up his inside. It was an inside leg kick. Yeah. To his knee, they were those were brutal. It was brutal. So, w- would you be okay with inside leg kicks against a southpaw like that? Yeah, with your back leg, that's what you're supposed to do. Except you got to watch it because if Hooker checked it, like Chris Weidman did against Anderson Silva, that's when people break their leg and get hurt. Did he check any of those with no, the inside he ones? He wasn't checking them. But if all you do is turn your knee in, and you've seen it with the. Uh, I've seen it with like five different fighters throughout my life. They it just breaks their tib fib. I mean, so turning it in like Chris Weedman, just visualize the Chris Weedman Anderson Silva first fight or second fight. Second fight. I think Barboza's got metal poles for legs though. I don't know. You can maybe break your kneecap if you turn yeah, it on that. <laughs> And it couldn't be worse, much worse than it was. Barboza's got he must have some amazing um He's unbelievable. Amazingly strong bone in his in his legs. He must have. he's he's been following Wolf's Law. So that was that was uh no inside leg checks. I don't know why. Um he's he was landing to the liver with liver kicks, spinning and when I say a liver kick, I mean a roundhouse kick to the liver, spinning back kicks to the liver, and Punches to the liver. He was like trifecta on the liver. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a video about that. I'm gonna do a video called the liver trifecta. And it was it was brutal. It should have been stopped. It's shame on that corner. Not even the referee. I don't even blame the referee. I blame the corner. The corner should have thrown in the towel. 
I don't know why they didn't. Some some corners are so brave when it's not them in there. So should have been stopped. Despicable. Uh, and, and if you want to talk about someone with a chin, man, Dan Hooker took some shots. Um, he had one of those heel kicks just miss his head. He's so lucky that missed his head. He might have a good chin. I don't think his chin was tested. I think, it, yeah. He, his liver. His <laughs> liver was tested more than liver. anything. He's got a fucking, <laughs> he's, got, he's got a rock solid liver. Oh, my God. Yeah, hey, you the, don't usually talk about that in a fighter. No, no, yeah, because he got hit, but, I mean, Barbosa hits the hard. The faces but, he made when he got hit oh, in the body were good. just uh, How could the corner not stop it? What, I mean, unless they were, like, playing a video game or something or, like, talking to each other and not paying attention, how could they not stop it? That was despicable. Despicable. And also, Edson Barbosa is... They were worried he was going to gas out. I guess he's, is he have a history of that. Well, he, he, he expends a lot of energy. But. Right. So, But he uh, he finished it. He finished it hard. So Dan Hooker's a tough guy. Too, too tough for his own good. So should have been stopped. But that's the, my biggest lesson of this fight, be, uh, besides the liver shots and how painful they were, is please, if you are working a corner in a, a UFC amateur fight, anything if your fighters getting the shit beat out of them throw in the towel do not be a fucking douchebag throw in the towel it doesn't make you tougher because your 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 fighters getting the shit beat out of them they need you to perfect protect them your number one goal number one number one in the whole world when you're in that corner your number one responsibility is to protect your fighter Protect your fighter. I think he showed he had a lot of heart, and you, you like you're saying, you might have to protect your fighter from themselves. But just like Brian Ortega showed a lot of heart, and got you know he definitely got a lot of strikes landed on him. But yeah. this was a little on really? a different level. Um, it was the same kind of thing, but I think it was on a different level. This was, you could see the 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 the, you know, the eye of of Ortega swollen. So it might have looked. From the outside, it looked, you know, terrible. If this fight was, it's not, not even the same league of destruction. This guy took a beating like 10 times worse than Ortega took. It was like, if you've ever, if you've never been hit in the liver, it's hard for me to explain. But for you, all you guys out there, them hit in the liver, imagine being spinning back kicked, spinning back kicked by Edson Barbosa like seven, eight times that landed. And then lake, uh, like liver kicks, probably five of them landed. And then liver punches. It's it was, it was brutal. The most brutal is, it was probably the most brutal beatdown I've ever seen, uh, that wasn't stopped. And this wasn't stopped by the ref or by DC. He just went down. Or by the corner. He went. He had. A, he went down in the went third down. round. And I for you, shame on a- you for making him go down. He shouldn't have. You should have stopped it while he was still standing. He was so fucking tough. He should have been able to be stopped on his, on his feet because that's he deserved that. But you guys let him go down, and that was terrible, terrible, terrible. I don't even want to talk about this fight anymore. Yeah, maybe we'll get more information on what his injuries were, and we'll I'll bring it up next week. But yeah, it, all all this camp said was concussion, which I think he's probably got some internal he injuries. A, he needs to change camps, please, please. Well, they did mention the uh, DC, or maybe it's John Anik mentioned that it's going to take the UFC some high-profile trainers to throw in the towel for everyone to think that that's okay. <laughs> I used to do it. I was I was high-profile for a while. I threw in the towel. But anyway, okay. More, more volume. More. Okay, so, all right, Rob Rob Font against. Uh, Sergio. Sergio Perez. Um, it was a good fight, not a great fight. I think it all boiled down to, to size. And, and reach, you think? Yeah, but size. I think he's just a bigger guy all around. I think I think if um I think if uh font was taller but thinner and, and the, the weight was equal and they were like they you know they averaged the same size, I don't think it would have been like it was because he was taller, heavier, stronger. He just, he just, he was able to out everything him, except outspeed him. And I think that's the only way that Pettis could have won. And he didn't, he didn't, he didn't fight in and out lateral with a lot of quick flurries. And I think that would be the only way you could win because he couldn't really outpower Font. 
Uh, he couldn't outreach him, so he could have like in and outed him, like just like quick flurries. He could have outsped him, I think. I think he was a little quicker on the combos, but he wasn't quicker with the single jab. And Font destroyed him with that. Not like destroyed, like destroyed, but he beat him up with that. And that's one reason he really won. Um, I think it was mainly because of his, just his, his, his jab. And it was brutal. It was like a telephone pole hitting him in the face over and over. If you've ever been hit with a solid jab by somebody and you're like trying to get out of the way of it, it honestly feels like a telephone pole is just hitting you over and over and over again. That's, that's where I get that telephone pole uh, metaphor. It was a unanimous decision. It was, which was a which is as unanimous as it gets. Yeah, it was like thirty twenty seven across the board, all three judges. It, yeah. So um, that was a unanimous decision for Rob Font. The only thing I took away from that fight was his jab. That jab was his jab was brutal. Yeah, it, it was that won the fight jab. for him. Yeah, I think the jab that jab meant everything. Um, and Perez showed how great he is. And he even fucking just missed with some high kicks and his. Con- he kicked yeah. over his head a couple times, yeah. didn't he? Over the he, top. He just, he just, I think they took, a, took out that weight. I think, I think he's going from 25 to 35. He was just bigger. He, he was, he was just out, outgunned because of size it looked like. So if he's going to stay there, he just needs to be a lot quicker in and out, in and out, in and out, lateral movement and, or, and, or, um, be more, be more powerful and, uh, bulk up, like just. If, if you know you can't, if there's not going to be a weight class down there anymore and you're going to have to move up one, you have to go up with the, with the weight class. What, do you come up from flyweight to yeah. bantamweight? So I think you should, uh, you know, bulk up a little and, and so he could, you know, be a little more powerful in that weight class. There's guys that do it and some guys go down, but I think they're taking away that weight class. So that's why I did it. But, but Sergio Perez, I think um, he looks like he could be a champion, but... He needs to, I think he needs to bulk up for this size, for this weight class. What else we got? Well, there was one other fight on the main card. It was Jim Miller. Yeah. Jim Miller got... Uh, Who did he fight? Uh, Oliveira? Yeah, Charles Oliveira, not Cowboy Oliveira. He got he got choked out. He just, Oliveira just ran in there, uh, took him down. Yeah, he body locked him, took him down, and got his back and and choked him out within like a minute and ten seconds of the first round. It was a good fight. Um, Have they had fought before? Yeah, I forget who won their first meeting between those guys, but that that was a rematch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know either. But Jim Miller is such a uh, he's just the consummate veteran. He's a veteran. I don't think he's ever been a champion. Um, but, um, but he's always been right up there. He's, he's, there's no way he's leaving the UFC yet unless he wants to, because he's always a competitive guy. He'll come right back. He's come back before and he's, he's a really tough guy and, uh, really talented. So what else we got going? What's the next card coming up? Well, the next one's a John Jones card, 29th. So after Christmas, John Jones, Gustafson two. Hey, serious. That's the fight. Okay. And what? John Jones won that first fight, as yeah, I remember. Yeah, close fight. He won a decision. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just not that oh. interested. I'm what, more interested. What about the co-main cyborg against Amanda Nunez? That I want to see that one. That's got me intrigued. I love to see that fight. The other ones, I'm just not that interested. To tell you the truth, I'm really not. That's a pay-per-view too. Yeah, Corey Anderson against. Uh, Latifa, nah. Chad Mendes against that, no. Nah. No, nah, <laughs> no. just not. Cond- no. Condit what against about Chelsea? Condit against Chiesa? <sighs> not really, not really. I just, I, I th- con- it would be, it would be, uh, it would be uh, the girl fight. Amanda against Cyborg. That's, I mean, that's the main fight that I want to see in that card. I, you don't want to see John Jones fight again? No, nah, I just, I just feel like whatever he accomplishes. I'm not trying to put him down because he's great on what he's accomplished, but I I think it's I think it has to do with the steroids and I mean I just think it just I don't think he'd be where he is without the steroids. Just like I don't think uh, I don't think you know Lyle Al, Lyle Al, you know Acevedo Lyle Alzado. I mean he admitted he wouldn't be where he was without the steroids 
he 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 did all kind of great things as a football player, but he admitted at the end of his career, I wouldn't have done these things if it wasn't for the steroids. And you know, I mean, I think we both know, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do you think he would have been there without the steroids? And you know, I he wouldn't. And I don't think fighters that are on steroids would have accomplished what they did with without the steroids, or else they wouldn't have done them. And we never would have known. Just like we didn't know. I mean, maybe Arnold would he have been. With the greatest bodybuilder of all time, if it wasn't for steroids, I don't know, but we'll never know because he was doing the steroids. So we have to assume that the reason he got there is because of the steroids. And same with a lot of the football players and baseball players. Jose Canseco admits he he wouldn't have hit as many home runs if it wasn't for steroids. So why would anybody be silly enough or naive enough to think that a fighter with that's done steroids would have reached the same heights that they did without without the steroids? Because they did the steroids. Like I said, nobody would think Jose Canseco would have been the home run hitter he is uh, without the steroids. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger would have been the bodybuilder, you know, or the, 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 the bicycle. What was his name? Lance. Lance Armstrong. Now we know he probably wouldn't have been where he is without the blood doping. So no, I don't agree with that because I think everyone else was blood doping too. So okay. So he would have. So nobody knows where he would have been, right? No, but but if you take a sport where it's so tainted, where you can't even compete unless you do what everyone else is doing, yeah, it's wrong. But then you can say that about just you can say compete. that about football and baseball too. You can. So, but we don't know. So I but don't. Think the, that, I think the UFC has taken the right stance of let's clean up the sport and test the crap out of everybody, so we really know if there is anything, and the best way they could do that. Was to hire uh, Usada to right, come Right, so that just started not that long ago. So now, and even even Usada has been proven that they'll they're not always <laughs> not always on top of the game. So with that said, okay, so now it's they're the best doing you it. got though. It's the best you got. Right, so we know that they're doing that now. But does it, so that now everything that happened before this, it's it doesn't really mean that much. And anything happens now, even though he's clean right now, he's had all that steroids. Steroids doesn't just go. The, the benefits of steroids stay with you. A lot of the benefits, a lot of the musculature and, 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 the, and, the, bone, and, the, and the, the density, it stays with you even, though, even when you're not doing your steroids. And most of these guys, once they prove they're going to do steroids, they know how to cycle on and off. And, it's, and obviously, it's not too hard to fool USADA. Well, we got John Jones fighting again. After at least two failed USADA Yeah, drivers. so I, I mean, that's why I'm just not that interested. I thought, I thought he was like the best fighter ever, and he's great. I loved watching him. And then when I found out he was a steroid guy, it's like, so, okay, so he's great because of steroids, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lyle Azedo, or Jose Canseco. Who, who wins between Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunez? This is going to be a good fight. What are they fighting at? Featherweight. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I don't know. I, don't, I love them both. I really love them both. I, I. I think I think they're both fantastic. I wouldn't bet against either one of them. So and I don't, and I, don't, I don't have to because I don't bet, so I'm not. I don't have to. It's gonna be a great. That's my favorite fight of the car of that card. Yeah, that's... I love Car Carlos Condit, and I like Mike Chesea. I mean, but I just don't think that's a good match. I just don't know why. I just don't like that match. I love them both separately, but I don't like them as a fight. I love Chris Cyborg and I love Amanda Nunez separately. I do love that as a fight. Corey and and Latifa, I I don't get. I, I'm just not getting a rise from that one. So it's not a great card, but we're gonna watch it because we are gonna do a podcast on it. So we are gonna watch it, guys. You'll okay. watch it against your better judgment. No, I'm so watch it just... what about so something we didn't talk about, which I found interesting. Was Sage Northcutt is not going to be fighting for the UFC. What? He won his last three fights. Explain that one, John. Uh, so his contract ran out, I think. He must have been either asking for too, too much money. I could see that happening. But what is the BS with Dana White saying, we're going to let him go work on some stuff and then maybe he can come back? Like, he's not good enough to be in the UFC. Dana Dana isn't really financially motivated. Um, he's he um, he he has. There's a lot of personal things when it comes to him and the, his dealings with. I mean that's why. I mean, 
Tito, I mean, one of the best fighters in the UFC, he helped make the the UFC not as much as Chuck did, but he helped. He was one of the he was one of the pioneers. But then how? And then so was Frank Shamrock. So how can Dana just completely erase them from the history books? Because he can do whatever he wants. So he can he it's he's not dick. He has too much money and too much money behind him. He's not he he's not uh, motivated by money. He's motivated like if you, you if you piss him off. Or get on the wrong side of them. It doesn't matter how much money you can make for the UFC. Then why come out and say something that seems really transparent to me, like, well, he needs to go work on a few things in another organization, then maybe he can come back. That's like, it. Why say that? Because do you think do you think that's true? Yeah, do I you think, think he believes that. Yeah, I don't think so. What? Yeah, I think he means it. I think he means it literally and figuratively. I don't think he just. I means think it he's a huge draw. So if you want to have the UFC. A popular fight you put sage on there i think people want to see him fight right but for some reason he got he pissed dana off so dana's saying go work on other stuff and then come back in other words i'm I mean, gonna the way he said it it made it sound like he needs to go work on some things like he's not very good and get better of course he's, he's gonna young. say that because he can say whatever he wants about but anybody that, but that's not true but i don't think but i think he's saying it and he does i'm he, bummed that he's not in the ufc yeah, he's, he's I, a, I think he's great to have i think he's a great person he's exciting as a fighter he's a clean cut guy he's not doing steroids very he's a clean cut guy respectful. i hope he's not very respectful. respectful he's a martial artist yeah. i think he brings a lot to elevate the sport in the ufc i i'm sad to see him go from the ufc i hope they re-sign him soon so do I. I, I. I love Sage Norka. I think he's good for everything. I love I love him. Like I love Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I think those kind of martial arts guys that are have the true... You know who I talked to today? It was good talking to him. Um, speaking of martial artists, I talked to Dwayne Bang Ludwig. He had the fastest knockout in the UFC for a while. Two of my good friends have. It was uh, Mark Weir had it for a while, and so is uh, Blaine, uh, Bain... Uh, Dwayne Bang Ludwig, and I actually worked with him when he fought Genki Sudo in uh, in Miami. I worked his corner, and I, w I trained him for that fight. But I talked to him today because he has an uh, he has an uh, he has a, a a program going where you can affiliate with him, and he sends you like techniques and stuff, kind of like I do. But I think his is a lot more progressive. Um, and there's a guy, this is, how, this is what a nice martial artist he is and how respectful. There's a guy in our, in our town, he's like in slow, I think, and he's going he's gonna to become an affiliate with uh, Dwayne Ludwig. So he pays him money, so his money, you know, he gets money for it, Dwayne does. But Dwayne looked and noticed that we were close proximity, right? 10 miles, 15 miles, it doesn't, I mean. So Dwayne calls me and said, out of respect, do you mind if I affiliate with this guy? If you don't want me to, you know, I won't. But I want to show you the respect, you know, because you're, you're in the, you know, the same county as he is. And I just want, you know, you know, he's asking to affiliate with me. And I, I just want to give you that, you know, if, if you don't want me to, I won't. Where's, this, the, where's the gym at? It's somewhere in slow. But it's just respectful. I mean, he's a true martial artist, you know. Um He's a true martial artist. He started as one. He fought as one, and and now his career's you know fighting career's over, and he's he's one of the most uh, sought after cornermen and trainers in in, in the world. Um, you know he's training uh, T J Dillashaw and um, just a great guy. But I, I did work with him uh, when he was younger, teenager in Colorado, and then I worked with him before he fought uh, Ginky Sudo, which was a really tough fight. He was the underdog, and we got him to get that decision. I think he won that decision. Yeah, he. Um, but um, but that was just respectful, you know. I mean, it's like it's business. So why would he? I mean, of course he wants to make the money to have this guy as an affiliate. But he called me, and if I said, "eh, it's too close," I'd rather you not. He wouldn't have done it. So, to me, that's huge, and that's good. Uh, huge loyalty, huge respect. So very nice. And I did see something else with you in it this weekend. Did you watch it? He watched it. Heather, my wife, made me watch it. <laughs> so it brought tears to my eyes. John is in a documentary about Chuck Liddell on the UFC's it's pretty good. webpage. It's pretty good. I thought it was pretty. So looking, me watching it, it was pretty cool because you got to see Chuck's career at every step of the way. You're there pick, picking him up after the fight or whatever, hoisting him up on your shoulder. But 
uh, I got, you know, you get to see Chuck's whole career, including way back in the days, they got foot, old school footage from the pit. Amateur fights. Like grainy old footage. Training and, in my in my backyard gym, it's, you know, just a little backyard gym and we're training. Even him doing some kata stuff that we used to do way back when. Yeah, um, so it was good. They had that footage and then they had, it was basically narrated by John, like talking over it because they came and interviewed John, but I thought it was really well done. I thought you both looked really good in it, so yeah, anyway, like, check it out. It's on uh, Fight Pass. It's like 25 years, the Ice Age. It's like the Ace Age. It was about him. It was about him, basically, but a lot of it about him going to Pride, too. And, that was and they did it, the UFC did a great job of making Chuck look really good, and yeah. they didn't make Tito look very good in uh, it. And, so, yeah. as you were saying before, you know, they have their favorites or whatever, but... But I thought you both came off really good in it. You gave a great interview. And so. Chuck, and Chuck, definitely Chuck should be their favorite. I mean, Chuck, you know, Chuck is such a fucking blue collar guy, and he always has been. And he did so much for the sport and for the brand of UFC. Well, this is how good it was. I watched the first three quarters of it, and then my wife and my daughter come in the room. They're like, "Oh, rewind it." So we. <laughs> did your wife and daughter see that whole thing? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they wanted to watch it, so I rewound it, and they did watched. Did they it. laugh at me? Where, which part? When I was, they they made me get emotional. I got te- I got I got teared up at one at one. You got a soft weeks. side. Everybody knows that, John. It's okay. I, I it's have okay. a soft spot when it's it comes right. to my fighters and and when them getting injured and stuff. But anyway, all right, guys. So check it out. Check it out and check out. Hey guys, check this out. If you want to get a better left hook, I have a left hook course which will be it will be uh, it will be um, linked to this this video. Okay, it will be linked to this video, and it's on all of my, it's on all of my social media. All you gotta go is the pit TV, and and you hit store and go to my left hook course, and it is the best left hook course ever. It's gonna teach you how to throw a knockout left hook. So that's all I gotta awesome. say. All right, John. Till next time. Thanks.